So here are 10 awesome Lightroom features that you might not know. So this one's a great way of sharing a library with clients. So say this is your library. This is a, some photos from a wedding I took recently. Um, obviously there will be more in the actual wedding. I don't just take 31 photos. Now you need to be synced with Lightroom Mobile for this to work. And to do that, you click this little drop down menu up here and go sync with Lightroom Mobile. It'll take you through some steps. I'm already synced. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the collections panel over here in the library module. I'm gonna click new collection, create collection, and I'm gonna call it Wedding. Include selected photos and it has to be synced with Lightroom Mobile. That's important. If you're not synced with Lightroom Mobile, that option won't be there. Now, if you notice, there's a button up here that says Make Public. If I click that, it will generate a URL. If I click the URL, it opens up a web page. And now this web page has all the photos in it. If you click a photo, it opens up full screen. You can cycle through them. You can comment on them. You can find out information about it. If you go to lightroom.adobe.com, you can see your various collections that you've made. And if you click shared up here and go to share settings, you can do things like you can allow downloads or you can show the metadata. You can look for a thumbnail for the page. You can send this URL to a client and they can just browse through the images. They can zoom in. Look at them like a slideshow. What's great about this is it's still synced with Lightroom. So if you want to make a change, say to this photo here, you go back into Lightroom, I'll select that photo. Say I want to do something like, I want to turn it black and white. It's now black and white. This is a great way to showcase your work with clients. They can maybe pick ones to purchase. They can feedback with the messages. You can make adjustments and they can see them live on this URL. And that just comes as part of Lightroom. Now this is less of a hidden feature and more something you really should be doing if you're editing in Lightroom just straight off the bat, especially if you are a Canon user because this affects Canon as I understand it much more than other brands. So when you import a photo, before you start adjusting your exposure and contrast and all that, you go to your camera calibration and change it from Adobe Standard to something from your camera. So if I go to Camera Portrait here, See how the colors have changed there. Camera landscape will change the colors again. Now this will bring back colors in your images that you literally just can't get keeping it on Adobe standard. You will get tones in the skin that will be completely lost if you don't do that. You start editing from this point, important tip. Now this one's cheating a little bit because it uses a plugin, but it's too good to leave out. In your browser, go to capturemonkey.com forward slash the fader. You take into the website, you can download the fader. In Lightroom, you go to file, and then you go to plugin manager. And I'm just gonna show a plugin in finder there. I'm just gonna put the fader in there, done. So this one is a great thing to work with Lightroom presets and it's great when you get like a pack of presets and you download them and you put one on you're like whoa way too far and then you've got to go through all the settings kind of pulling it back to make it a lot more subtle. So now we've got it I'm going to go to file plugin extras and the fader has appeared there. I'll go to my JW presets which you can get put a link in the description they're my presets and I'm going to go to one that I know is pretty strong, which will be uh, Code of Color Gold. So that's quite an intense one, especially if you put it up a bit. So what's happening now is you can see the tone curve here shifting as I pull this up and down. So that's minus 50 up to 150%. So it even pushes it a little bit further. So I'm going to put it around 78%, click OK, and now all these settings have set themselves 
natively. You could now save this as a 74% version of that preset. Take it off completely, and it looks like that. So it's a nice way to get a bit of a subtler look to your photos. I'll put a link in the description for where to get that plugin from. It's very simple and easy to install and use, and it's free. This one's great when you have a photo like this, which has got some nice punchy colors, but it's a bit oversaturated and maybe the greens. So I wanna bring those down without losing the skin tones. So you'd normally go to your saturation and you pull down your greens, but there's a bit of yellow in there too. So do I keep pulling down different colors until I find what I want? The best thing to do here is to go to the targeted adjustment tool, which is this thing here. You click that and you click somewhere on the image and you, pull down for saturation, I'm in the saturation tab at the moment, and you can see the yellow and the green slider both coming down there. So I'm gonna pull that down there. So now we've lost some of that green, but we've kept some nice skin tones. It also works for the luminance, for the hue. So here with the tone curve, I'm gonna pick this. So I'm gonna pick the tone here, and I'm gonna pull down, but I'm gonna pick his skin tone here, and I'm gonna pull that up. So now it's giving me a curve here and I'm just picking different tones and pulling them up or down, again with the targeted adjustment tool. This one's good when you've done something like this, which is take a load of photos, but take them in some sort of automatic mode like AV that I've used here, where the exposure is jumping around a bit. We've got one over 400 for the exposure F over 3.5, ISO 800. The next one along is the same settings, but one over 800, so you've got half the shutter speed there. If you wanted to match all your settings here, so say I was just going to, so say that's what I wanted. If I then select these and sync my settings, what happens here is now that has synced, but it's a lot darker than that one. So what you want to do is go up to settings and then match total exposure. And what will happen now is Lightroom has now, rather than copy the settings, has copied the exposure. And so now they all look like they're all part of a set. This is a nice quick little one for when you're going through a job like this where I've got 4,643 photos from a wedding I took. You go through each one going, I'm gonna rate that a two, click the next one, two, the next one, two, click the next one, leave that one, that one another two. So this just takes ages. Much better way of doing this is very, very simple. You simply put caps lock on. You use the numbers one to five and it will auto advance. So you go two, 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 zero, two, zero, 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 four, zero, five, five, three, two. And it's a much, much quicker way of going through it. When you've got over four and a half thousand photos, that really makes a difference. This is a nice quick little one. When you go over these here, if you shift and double click, Lightroom will give you what it thinks is the auto settings for that particular slider. And while we're here, let's look at another one. This involves the local adjustment filters. With a photo like this, I'd want to pull up the exposure to expose our couple a bit better. But we're completely losing detail in the sky, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a linear filter. I'm gonna do a nice big gradient down where I really pull the colors back. But what's happened here is it's affecting our couple there. So if I click brush while I'm in here, and then erase, select auto mask, I'm gonna turn the flow down, turn the feather down a little bit. There you can see it there. I can turn the flow down to about 50%. And what's happening here is it is finding the edge of our subjects and it is cutting them out from the linear filter, so that's no longer affecting them. Now that needs a bit more adjustment, but we've solved that immediate problem and we've still got a nice dark sky. So here's another one. Sometimes the point you're looking for is a very, very fine place on a very small section and you can easily overshoot it with these sliders. So a good thing to do is to pull that out as far as it will go and you have a nice big slider to work with. You have much more control to get the exact right setting you want. Now this last one really helps you get your settings really precise by seeing what you're doing. 
if we were to zoom in, we want to add a bit of sharpening and then we want to mask that sharpening. You kind of work in a bit blind here, really. You can't really see, you can only sort of see the end result. So something that's good to experiment with, with all the sliders is holding Alt. Now when you hold Alt, everything changes. I'm going to reset the sharpening. So I'm going to sharpen and it's just going to show me the black and white. So it's going to show me that how sharp that's getting. So still holding Alt, I'm now going to look at my masking and this is going to show exactly where I'm masking. So the white areas are where I'm masking. So I'm just going to pull it to there, leave the skin tones alone, we get the edges of the hair. So that's given it a nice bit of sharpening, but it hasn't really messed around with the skin tones. This is good to experiment with to really see what happens with the different sliders. For example, if I hold Alt and change the exposure, it will show me when things start to become overexposed. It's not really relevant for this image because you wouldn't want it like that. If I were to go to something like this, where we have a window, we can now see where the window is overexposing. If I were to hold it with the blacks, it shows you where the blacks are going off into complete darkness. And a little bonus one before I go. Sometimes when you've got all these open, you're working on a smaller screen, it's a bit of a nightmare trying to find what you're doing. So if you right click on it and go to solo mode, what happens now is if I click on one, only that one will open. So I know I want to go to my lens correction, or now I know I want to go to my details, or I know I want to go to my tone curve, and you just deal with one thing at a time, keeps everything nice and neat. And those are my Lightroom tips, I hope they helped you.